Glory to God. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. I invite everyone to stand up. We're going to open up our Bibles in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 7. from verse 18. Amen. Luke seven eighteen says the following. Then the disciples of John reported to him concerning all these things. And John calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to Jesus, saying, Are you the com coming one, or do we look for another? When the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? And that very hour he cured many of infirmities, afflictions, and evil spirits, and to many blind he gave sight. Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things you have seen and heard, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are ar arised, the poor have the gospel preached to them. Amen. The church may be seated. The praise group will still sing a song.
Glory to God. Uh, Brendan, today in the morning, we spoke, spoke about faith, about, about faith in the midst of the church. And in fact, it, it doesn't exist. There is no passage in the Bible. From my point of view, there is very clear regarding what faith is. This text here shows us clearly uh, what faith is. If we look what the Bible speaks about faith, we're going to see that there are two types of faith. The historical faith and the prophetic faith. And there is also the trajectory of faith, which goes back and forth. It, it, when it goes, it is when man goes to God. And man goes to God. We live in a world, evangelical world, where People believe in God. People believe in Jesus. People believe that there is salvation. There is a better life. People they expect something uh, when it comes to their lives with God. When man goes to God, he goes his own way. Their man's way of thinking, man's way of understanding what God is for him, or for her. We many go to God only uh, go to God with selfish interests. It is a way of going. People go to God with their objectives and their trials and their hopes, their doubts. And this is a form of you to go to God. In the gospel, many people go to God in this way, waiting for an answer, waiting for a better life. And their trajectory back is when God answers man's requests and when God manifests to man. The faith, the historical faith, is the faith in which man thinks something regarding God only for his for this earthly life, but man has no commitment with God. The faith of man that goes to God only thinking about his selfish interests is a faith that changes. It extinguishes. Sometimes it, it is forgotten. And the historical faith is, for example, is a person that believes in God only when that person is expecting God to go to their rescue. But these people sometimes, they believe in God, not really believing. They are always uh, plan B. If God doesn't uh, act him on my behalf, then I will have to do my part. God, who is justice, God, who is everything. Sometimes a small thing, I don't have to ask God for it. I'm not going to bother God with a small cause. I'm going to bother God if it is to ask for a big thing, right? And they wait on a, a, a judge of small cases. Do you know what is a judge, a judge of small cases? It is the one who wants to resolve their own problems on their own. They don't wait on God. It's a man that... There, there was a man that was always carrying a, a gun. 
And they asked, why do you carry a gun? Then he answered, I carry with me the judge or small cases. When something that I don't want to bother God with, then I use my judge of small cases. <laughs> That's the plan B. They don't wait on God. They pray, but they try their luck here and there. They try their luck on, on the lottery. They try to reach you know, one way or another. They don't wait for the moving of the Lord. That's the historical faith. It is to go to God only when you want. And this, there are some people that they, they change a lot. Today they are here, they are in the blessing. Today they want the blessing of God. And tomorrow they don't want it anymore. They change. They change with time. They change, they change with the situation in which they are living. This is you having a faith, a historical faith. It is you believing God and knowing that He exists, that, that there is a project of salvation of man, and you believe that Jesus was born to save man, that Jesus is the Son of God, but you don't follow what is that God has for your life. But the Word of the Lord also tells us about another faith, which is a prophetic faith. And this prophetic faith it does not come from men. It doesn't come like a historical faith which has the origin on man's heart. But the prophetic faith, its origin is on eternity. And it's, it is firm. The word says that the faith is a firm foundation. You know why? Because God is firm. God does not change. God is justice. He is firm. He is power. He is majesty. God is three times holy. He doesn't change with time. He doesn't change with pain. He doesn't change with infirmity. He just doesn't change with tiredness. He doesn't change. And this text here shows us clearly this, that uh, it speaks about a faith that comes and goes. Now we see here the disciples of John the Baptist. And they had heard about Jesus. They didn't know Jesus. John the Baptist was preaching that Somebody was going to come, who was going to be greater than him. But they had no knowledge of what, who Jesus was. And when Jesus begins his ministry, he begins to work in the work of the Lord. And that became news around the city, neighboring cities. Jesus became known by the miracles that he performed, by his word, by his advices. Because Jesus aggregated, he called people, he gave instruction, he blessed people, and people liked it. And this news arrived to the ears of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist, when he hears this, he goes there and says, Are you, are you unsure? Go there and ask Jesus. And two disciples went to Jesus. They went to the place where Jesus was, and there they introduced themselves to Jesus and asked him, Are you the one that we are waiting for, or should we wait for another? Is this, <laughs> like they were asking, is this just gossip, or you are the Messiah? And the way that Jesus answered was very interesting. In the moment in which they asked Jesus, the word says that, on 21, and at the very moment they cured many of infirmities and gave sight to many who were blind. At the same moment in which Jesus hears that question, he begins to act. That's the prophetic faith. Because when man goes to Jesus, waiting from him what is prophetic, it leads man to live the prophetic life. They didn't care if Jesus was 
another one that was preaching and curing. No, they wanted to know if Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God. Their doubt was if Jesus was the Anointed of God, the Christ. If He was the one who was going to come to save the world, not to save just the Jewish people. They went to Jesus with their doubts, but doubts that were going to open their spiritual eyes, doubts that were going to open up their minds so that they could understand and accept the project of God for the life of man. They didn't go to Jesus like the crowd came to Jesus asking for bread and, or a cure or, so that they may, may continue their own lives. No. When they went to Jesus, they, they were awoken by the Holy Spirit to go to Jesus to take this doubt out of their heart. Is, is this the, truly the Messiah that we have been waiting for? Because the prophets and the prophets, they pointed out to Jesus because they were tired of living history. They wanted an, an experience so that they could have an eternal life. They knew the law of Moses. They lived the law of Moses. They knew history of their parents, of their the, what happened in Egypt, of what Moses did, the Red Sea that opened up, the Jewish um, feast. But they were waiting for something greater. They were waiting for something new, and spiritually speaking, what was going to give them an opportunity to be part of this church, the body of Christ, this church that we are living here in this city of Pompano Beach. And that's what God brought us here uh, for, to show to us but that there is something beyond what man is waiting for, expecting. There's something more real, more alive than what is preached out, out there. What is preached out there is just a historical Christ that He came and died and on the third day He resurrected, but nobody lives. Nobody puts it in practice what is being the testament of the Lord, the testimony of the Lord, what is being the Word of God for men. And those men, now when they went to Jesus, they heard, they saw the operation of wonder. They saw the miracles. They saw the moving of the Lord. They saw that Jesus was truly the Messiah. They saw that Jesus was the one who came not to not only forgive the sins, but not only to save the people of Israel, but to say the humanity because that was the experience of John the Baptist when John the Baptist heard he said here's the Lamb of God that takes the sin away from the world not, not only was going to be the Lamb of God it, until this point in the law Moses forgave the sin of the Jewish people but when John the Baptist sees Jesus he says Here's the Lamb of God that takes the sin away from the world. The Son of God, the Messiah, the Jesus, the Christ, who, the one who came to take the sin away from the world. He is the one who came to deliver your soul. He is the one who came to change your luck, to change your destination. Maybe you came to this place anguished with doubts. And tonight you'll see the operation of God in your life. Because if you entered here with doubts and questions, is it really the one that was supposed to come or we should be wait for another? If you came here with this doubt, if you, if you want to know the true Jesus, the true Son of God, the one who died and on the third day resurrected, you will see today a miracle. Because your eyes are going to be opened. And you will see and hear and you'll be able to walk you'll see the glory of God not only for this life but a miracle that first the miracle will first happen in your spiritual life the miracle first will happen in your soul the miracle firstly will happen in you because that's what God wants He wants to take you from the place where you are and put you on the path that leads to eternity and at the same time, he cured many infirmities and evil spirits and gave sight to many blind. And 
Jesus answering and saying to them, Go and tell John the things you have seen and heard, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them. So then when Jesus operated all the miracles, when they were all delivered spiritually, when after the thirst of these two men, those disciples that went to Jesus, after they went to, uh, they, were, they were spiritually fed, then Jesus spoke to them. Now you can go and proclaim. You know why? Because the Word of God delivers men. The Word says that the faith comes from hearing and hearing the Word of God. In order for me to have the prophetic faith, no, not for me to have the firm foundation, faith that never changed, that faith that will cause you to go to God and receive the blessing from God, this faith comes from hearing and hearing the Word of God. That's why Jesus, that's why God brought you here tonight, because you need to hear the voice of the Word of God. You need to trust only in the Word of God. You don't need to trust in anyone else on lottery and judge of small cases. Forget about all this. What you need is to trust truly, truly trust in God. And you will see that God has for you this. All of those miracles. All of those blessings. And to the poor, he proclaims the gospel, the eternal gospel. Not this gospel that we hear out there in the world. Not this gospel that that only preach about the self-benefit and prosperity and that you can do all things and God is love. What is being proclaimed to us as the poor of spirits uh, is the eternal gospel, the one that God has given to us. It's the experience lived by the disciples, the examples left by Jesus, it is what the Father, Eternal Father, is speaking to our hearts. We have no doubt about this because when man goes from the historical into the prophetic, when man begins to see the prophecy of God, he has no doubt of the operation of God in his life. The storms may come, the trials may come, the necessity may come that he will be firm in God. Because he knows that today may be bad, but tomorrow will be good. Man doesn't come simply because he wants a benefit. He doesn't come because he believes in what he sees. He doesn't come because the miracle is here. No, he comes because he knows that it's good to be in the presence of God. He comes because he knows that in the house of the Father there is plenty of bread plenty of blessings, the plenty of sustenance, the love of God, the grace and the mercy of God. And that's why we're here tonight. We're not here simply trying to... We don't want anything more, more than what God wants to give us. And one thing we know that God has a lot to give us. What you have accumulated to this day, what God has given you, it's just a beginning. It's just a demonstration, a small demonstration of the love of God. Just remain firm. Just persevere in walking with Jesus. Walking in Jesus. And you will see that the blessing of God will be always and truly and true in your life. May God bless us. Let us close our eyes and hear praise.
Ele tá com Ele Amen. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. My brethren, the mission of the church is the same as John the Baptist. If man has doubts, has to go to God. Man has questionings. John the Baptist instructed them to go to Jesus. In the same way, we as a church, our messages go to God. You're going to have your, your experience with God. Try to seek an experience with Jesus, not with the denomination. Those men, they follow John the Baptist as an option. And many of us are following Jesus as an option. We're not here seeking a label, a name, a leader, but we follow God. Because he has for us the answer. And it's in the right moment. At the moment they asked, at the exact, that exact moment, Jesus began to act. And we are going to Jesus because when we go to him, he acts in our behalf. God never fails. We are never disappointed after a meeting with God. And Tonight we'll be invited also to have a meeting with Jesus. Go to him and ask. Are you really the one that we are waiting for? Is this that you want? And you see that God at the right moment will act in your behalf. At the moment of the pain, he will give you the relief. At the moment of sadness, he will give you the joy. In the moment of anguish, in the moment of tribulation, He will give you the peace. 
In a moment, a desperation. You give you hope. And the hope that we hope is what we desire is to be in eternity with God. Amen. I invite the whole church to stand up. And you who entered here tonight can begin. Maybe you never went to God, or maybe you are going to God in your own way, but tonight God wants to teach you the best way to please Him, which is to hear your, your, His Word and reading the Word of God and to hear the voice of God and placing this as a priority, priority in your life. You only need to trust God and no one else. Human resources, none of it. Live this away. Medicine, God can operate. And God wants to operate in your life. But for this, you need to open your heart up and allow the Holy Spirit to do the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now we're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we glorify your name because we began begin, uh, another week before the one has changed our lives, before the one has prepared an eternity for his chosen ones. Lord, we want, we praise you because without faith, where we would, would we be? If, if we're not for your good hands that have, have rescued us, we praise you, Lord. Give you honors because faith is added on to our lives every day. And this is a faith that makes man walk towards eternity. And we praise you and give you honors in the name of Jesus. Amen.
God. Lord Father, we ask that your word may be kept in our hearts and that the faith that comes from eternity may flow into the hearts here present and that we may live by faith and that we may live depending only on you. Teach us, Lord, to seek you. Teach us, Lord, to wait only on you. Teach us, Lord, to be faithful servants of the Lord. Receive this service and in our adoration that we place in before your altar and that we may have a week of victories in your presence, a blessed week with deliverances, and that we may see your miracles and that the doors may be opened and that your people may have victories in your presence. Take us home in peace is a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. We're going to now begin the assistance. If you have a reason uh, for prayer, if you want a private prayer, we are making ourselves available to pray for you. We want you to leave this place with a complete blessing from God. And to this woman that the Lord has shown in a spiritual gift, she needs to exercise her faith. I hope that you take possession of this blessing, not only this woman, but e each one of us. May we live this place loving more this salvation God and Jesus, that we may live this great blessing to all the peace of the Lord. I'm going to have a quick meeting with Group A after the assistance. If you need prayer, just raise your hand. They're going to go towards you. Yes. 